Doctor. This is the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Make More Money Selling Your Art, Proven Techniques to Turn Your Passion into Profit. All right. Well, we have a special guest with us today on the Marketing Minute. Mark Sublet, who's a gallery owner in Tucson, Arizona, is going to be on with us. For those of you listening on the Marketing Minute podcast, here's a question from Ashton B. in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who asks, if you're working with several, oh, this is time, good timing. If you're working with several art galleries, how do you decide which gallery gets which paintings? Mark, you want to address that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, me, right? Yeah. No, not necessarily. Uh, if they, for instance, let's say they're working with me and somebody that's in, let's say, Jackson Hole, they'd yeah. be smarter to get the material that is related to the Jackson Hole area, i.e. the Tetons, versus sending them Saguaros, right? Send me Saguaros. Now, they should have a working relationship with the gallerists, and they should be able to say, oh, I do well with this. I don't do well with that. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, if let's say they're, you paint the same kind of subject matter and it's uh, the, the galleries are not, you know, really different in the locations, who's doing the better job for you, right? I mean, reward the, the gallerists that are making the sales and promoting you, whoever that is. If, if you have one gallery that's doing really well for you, they should get more. I mean, until the other gallery steps up and does well or comes to you and says, hey, I'm going to do this. I'd like to get more paintings. Um, you know, and here's my plan. If they're not doing that, if they're just saying, give me stuff, then, you know, go with the person who's doing a better job. Do you ever get a painting, uh, you know, somebody sends you a painting and, and, and you're like cringe when you see it and you wish that you didn't even have to worry about selling it or do you, you know, did not hang it or how, how do you deal with a situation like that? Well, unfortunately, most of my artists are so good that, you know, that even in a painting that I might not particularly care for, um, usually sells, but, um, you know, I had one that was, I got, that was a subject matter, which just seemed like there would be no way I could sell it, but somebody found it perfect for them. Cause that's what the subject they liked it. Yeah. And so you just don't know, don't, you know, realize that just because your taste as a gallerist might be X, some subject matter may be, uh, quite desirable that you just don't recognize. So I, I let every, you know, I don't ever really try to, push my um, artist to do X or this. I just say, give me your best work. I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, what I do is I send pictures first. I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll pick somebody that I think it's a fit for and I'll send it to them and I'll say, is this something you want? And sometimes they'll say no. Sometimes they say yes. And so I think that right off the bat kind of solves that problem. And, and then, you know, you, and, and I think the regional thing is huge, right? You know, Adirondack paintings don't do well in the desert. Nope. Or not. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Send, right. to the, send those to you. Yeah, that's right. All right. So the next question comes from Joe Eisenhart in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Speaking to the West, Joe says, are there businesses that hire freelance plein air painters? I've never heard of that. Uh, well, I have heard of that actually. I'll, I'll try to address that first. Uh, there's a big thing right now, uh, plein air weddings. This is, uh, I'm, I'm seeing, hearing from and seeing a lot of people doing this where they're hiring a plein air painter to come in and paint at a wedding or, or at a reception. It's kind of a, kind of a thing right now. And uh, artists are getting paid. One, one artist told me they got flown to France. Uh, this was pre-COVID. They got flown to France and they, got, they, they were paid some ridiculous amount of money because weddings, you know, people like to spend money. And uh, they did a painting of the wedding while it was taking place. And, you know, usually what they do is they go in there and they kind of paint in all the background and everything first. And then, you know, they paint their figures in last when the wedding's going on. Uh, I've never heard of businesses hiring freelance plein air painters. What, what about you, Mark? You heard anything no, about that? never heard about it ever. But I think that's a great idea for the for the weddings. I think you could make a complete career doing that if you like those kind of things. Um, I mean, it would be... I could see it. I can definitely could see it, but no, I've never heard of it. No, I never have either, but I, I think there's, you know, there's something interesting in that. Uh, there is somebody who pointed out to me that they've put themselves out there in, they're in a convention city like San Diego or something. And they, uh, they do these plein air retreats. Uh, you know, if somebody's coming in for a convention and they want a company bonding meeting, you know, they'll set them up with 40 or 50 easels. They'll give them a lesson and, and they, you know, they make good money from that. But that's that's an interesting question. It raises some 
some uh, good ideas. So anyway, that's the Marketing Minute. This has been the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes. You can learn more at artmarketing.com.